Hi there, we're back. I'm Speed at the bottom of the helix. The next clinic will show you a regular maintenance procedure for rolling stock and locomotives, both diesel and steam. This should be done annually to keep everything running sweetly with few, if any, problems. We welcome the Australian Regions AP Manager and also MMR number 177, Mr. Jerry Hopkins. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you are. This clinic uh, is basic maintenance. It's not upgrading or installing decoders or doing super work on things. It's just regular maintenance once a year. You do this, and there's a little bit of video at the end will show you the difference between a car that gets maintained regularly and one that doesn't. Brad, you ready? Yes, please. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Great Northern Down Under layout. This is my little world. But today we're going to show you regular maintenance of rolling stock and locos. Uh, I did a full clean of wheels and that sort of thing back in June. And as you only need to do this about once a year, I had trouble finding something with dirty wheels. I did get a couple, so we can start. There's one express reefer that has some dirty wheels, just this one, and the outside edge of these two. Um, we're going to clean those, and the best way to do it is to stick it in a cradle. That's my cradle and use a Dremel. They're numerous Dremels and uh, look-alikes, clones, whatever you like to call them. So I will show you a baby Dremel. Puts four batteries in the base and away you go. When you're doing this cleaning always do the wheels on the opposite side of the car. You get a much better angle, a bit of pressure on the one wheel so that it doesn't spin and that cleans the wheel. And we do the other one. A bit more. Always use a brass brush in the Dremel. The steel ones can wreck your wheel sets. I don't advise using a mains power Dremel. Too powerful and can cause damage. I do have the baby Dremel. We'll turn this around for the other side. Don't normally have them upside down. There we go. And we shall now do the other side. That way. This is the bigger one, the more modern one. And it has a light in the end. So...
we shall do another one of these just to make sure you know what's happening it's all straightforward stuff Clean the wheels. Doesn't take long. And as I said before, you only have to do this once a year. And the, the more you actually operate the layout, the less you have to do. I get other people's logos here for fitting decoders and quite often they are dirty and that's why I have limited running on the layout between operating sessions so that I don't get everything dirty and we use the micro brush for the KD one on one side and the other turn it round it'll turn and twist like that and that one is almost ready to go we just pop the trucks up wheels out of the trucks and do them. If I have enough time at the end of the little session I'll give you a, a demo of clean and unclean wheels rolling down a 2% grade. It's fun to watch. Take bets on how far the car will go before you start. You can make plenty of money that way. So that one's ready to go no extra weight inside there is a bit of a weight underneath between the top part and the bottom part so that's enough the other thing to check the one that part that always gets missing are brake wheels the brake wheels on all types of rolling stock they're the thing that gets knocked off and And on this one, we've got the brake wheel, the ladders. See that ladder's a little bit, needs a touch of glue. Everything else is okay on that one. And that has got Code 88 wheels, which do run a lot better than the Code 110. So I've gone through and changed quite a few of them and it makes a difference it means your logos can pull quite a bit extra and there's the packet of the wheels i've used some out of this packet those are the wheels i get and very worthwhile now passenger cars they have the same problems get dirty wheels and This one's got a little bit of extra weight underneath. Not much, but enough. Uh, it's got McHenry couplers, which plug straight in, like the European style coupler. Ah. You want to force it. clips in but they have a tendency to sag on their own so the piece of styrene has been put on the lower bar so that's got something to rest on and the same at the other end and then I picked this one up 
for one reason it's missing the KD spring which sits in there so you've all had that problem you all know how to do that so I don't have to show you how to do the KD wheel this particular one you can see the difference from standard just there and there you see the ends of the brass bearing caps uh, the wheels on this being River Aussie it had all scale flanges and didn't like my track and my turnouts so I replaced the wheels we had a very sloppy fit so drilled out the axle hole slightly just a little bit with a smaller drill and placed a little brass bearing cap in the hole touched it with a soldering iron to push it in slightly just a little bit and the same on the other side until I got the right amount of side play in there just a little bit of side play which means you know they're in far enough and it makes a lot of difference to the rolling ability so that's a passenger car nothing else done to this particular one some of them have got lights but not all and not often I run a passenger train because I don't have enough room on my little layout next is a special this is another one of the express reefers this one's got pickups added piece of circuit board either side and spring to rub on the backs of the wheels and provision inside for sound car module from soundtracks it's in another car at the moment um, I've only had the one and it gets moved around a little for demonstrations but in here on the backs when the wheels are cleaned just make sure that the wires just touch the back of the wheel and not drag on the axles and that's the only thing now left for freight cars so it's time to mess the place up with a diesel this is a proto 1000 with a backman body and extra detail added to this just because it's me handrails and aerial change the horn winterization hatch lift rings all the other little extras you you would add now servicing these exactly the same as with the rolling stock and this one's been done recently so there's nothing for me to run i connect a pair of clips or crocodile clips whatever you have handy to the little bar down the middle and run it at about 10 mile an hour and then use the Dremel and that's sufficient for for doing the wheels now the next thing and this is important with a lot of the diesels they have the wheel of course and there's a phosphor bronze bearing block one for each wheel and in between is a split axle which pushes into a plastic gear not uncommon on Proto 2000 and some of the Atherns other brands I don't know um, for split gears and split gears will make a click 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 noise when you're going along if you're lucky if you're not lucky they just misbehave and make 
you wonder why the logo will stop or do something wrong at some time. Now, this is the wheel out of a Proto 2000, identical to an Australian wheel, except these have the little nub on the end and the Australian wheel sets don't, they're interchangeable. This has got a split gear, as you can see, you can pull the wheels out, the axles out of the gear. You can replace the whole wheel set. This could be a regular thing, and it was for a number of years. Um, you could buy a packet of gears for Proto 2000 four-wheel diesels, four-wheel truck diesels. You can use the Athern SD70 gears, the straight swap. Here in Australia, we had two brands of Loco. We'll move him out and bring him in. There's an Australian Loco. It's an Alco, like a six-wheel truck, FA1. Just for so you know what it's all about. These have six bearings in the in the truck, and they do split. Someone will come in and say, oh, I think I've got a split gear. And by the time you check, you find they are all split and replace six of them. Easiest way to test, put your finger on one wheel. You can rock it back and forth, but it won't turn. Do the same on the other side. Now, if it was split, what would happen is that you're rocking the gear against the center and the wheel will turn while you're doing it. It's running inside the gear. Split gear. So, yeah, it would need changing. This one's got a slightly different problem uh, with the gear in the middle. Uh, because the gears are on the side of the truck instead of being centered, um, it can miss the gear in there sometime. So, this will get fixed up at a later date. And again, same Fossil bronze bearings, and we'll show you how to fix those. Now we'll get mine back up. Now we use a small brush. I use an old brush that's past its use by date for painting. There we go. And magic fluid called CRC 226. It doesn't come in a little bottle like that. It comes in that sort of bottle. So, CRC 226. And you use it for cleaning your track. And it displaces moisture, penetrates, lubricates, and protects metals. It stops oxidization, which is what we want for model railways. Now, with a drop of this stuff, stuff is easier to say than, than 226, either side of the block that's down in there in the metal frame. On DC, not required. But on DCC, because it's a form of alternating current, a metallurgist will tell you, and if you look up the periodic tables for elements, it will tell you these two elements will cause this problem. So, DCC causes the problem, and the fix is get rid of the oxidization. Depending on how often you run the loco, probably every six months. It may go for 12 months, it depends on the atmosphere. So, we do this for all of the bearings. And you don't want too much, just enough to get down the sides of the bearing. And this prevents oxidization and stops that funny, inexplicable jerking of a loco as it's running along the main line with no turnouts. Once that's done, problem's fixed. And of course, the same as before, 
we use the micro brush to put some graphite powder down the sides. The graphite powder um, you get in hobby shops. Uh, KD make it and they call it um, uh, some flaky sort of name and they, they look like little tiny flakes rather than a powder like this. Grease them I think they call it. I got mine uh, about 35 years ago and I got it in a big jar at the moment the jar is up to that level and will probably last me the rest of my life and the next three lives that I live if I do of course so I've got plenty there for ease of use I put it into a little jar and that fits in my toolbox so does the CRC now the gears there's the gear that's broken, split. You can see it pulls apart. So what you do, you pull ah, those out. And I'll do a sleight of hand here. So we have a pair here and we have a gear. This one is a slightly smaller one and is out of the Trainorama, which is the logo in front of me, the, the pretty Australian loco. You buy these in a packet. Like so. And it says Trainorama on there because there are two sizes, Trainorama and Oz trains. Some clever person has done these with a 3D printer. It's done a very, very good job. You poke the end in. And turn it round. Poke the end in there. This has been in and out a couple of times in the demo. So it goes in like that and we have to gauge it. So we catch hold of it and squeeze it. When it stops, it's engaged. He's built a ridge in the middle to stop the two sh shafts touching in the middle. So we put the KD gauge on it and that is perfect engage. Uh, sorry, NMRA gauge. So, so there we go. That's fixed it. Now, interesting, this is the Austrain's gear and can be used to replace the ones in the Proto 2000. And it saves having to wait a long time for gears to come in from America. And the current situation is anything between uh, three weeks and three months. Some things take longer. So you know, we've got those locally and we can interchange that way. So I will just put this back on here just for I don't lose it for the next demo I've done this at a couple of conventions and that's it so that goes now there's a bit more to do on a loco than there is on a piece of rolling stock so I shall endeavor to Get this off. I've been working with the uh, graphite powder. It makes everything slippery. <laughs> there we go. sound decoder and uh, transducer I take no notice of that the part that concerns us now is the bearings on the gear tower so we go to oil this is Atlas oil but you can use um, 
Labelle or any of the other model oils. We put some on the brush. Only a drop and on the ends of the bearings. With some diesel of course you have to pull them apart more than this. Uh, we go in on there. Can't get in on the front of this one at the moment but that's easy to lift out. And again on the ends of the motor. And that one's even worse but uh, that's it. That, and you only need to do that once a year if that once every two years is normally enough for that sort of thing. Over oiling causes the majority of problems with motors and even brand new ones where they've over oiled them in the factory. Um, you, know, you have to get round them. So that's it, we'll put it on the track and give it a little run. But for, we'll do the steam loco first and people are asking what are the extra wires? Circuit board in the bottom there. You should be able to see it. Um, it's got the resistor on it and it supplies two lights at the front behind the markers. I think they're green on this one. And we have the number board lights, again surface mount LEDs, they come back and there's a resistor on this board, it just makes a connection board with resistors that much easier. You've also got one there for the headlight which is in there and this one doesn't have a backup light, some of them have I've put a backup light on them. So that's the maintenance that's required on there. And we hook the front through drop it on and that's that so the next your perfectly common garden locomotive again we have our cradle upside down is most of the servicing is done upside down. We clean the wheels. These are clean already. It does have traction tires, but we won't worry about that. Um, so you'd connect your supply, your DCC supply up to that wheel and that one. Because with this type of contact, whoops, with this type of contact, you pick them up off the axles and that picks up off one side of the truck and this one will pick up the off the axles which picks up off the other pair of wheels. So you have pick up off both sides. There's better ways but yeah, that's, that's perfectly good and it does last. What you have to do with a little touch of CRC on this one only a little tiny drop is on the axles more so if the thing is standing around rather than being run and that stops any oxidization on the axles and on the pickup pads so that's that one um, we run the loco up to about 10 mile an hour and we do the cleaning as we did before with the Dremel tool this is a Broadway Limited, which I got second hand a few years back. And the gentleman who had it had run it a, a small amount, not a lot, and it was in good condition. First thing I did was tear out the QSI decoder and put in a Soundtracks. Now, the reason for that was it was a QSI number one, version one which was nowhere near the capabilities of the later QSI decoders. So that came out and we used the code. On here you can see there's little bits of fluff around by the brake gear that's been picked up and kicked up by the wheels. So you, in the servicing, you pull all those off 
um, any other bits of junk that's been picked up. If you've got a cat that goes on the layout, there'll be a lot of cat hair in there. We don't have a cat here. And doing this one day, just as a side, going in, pulling off the little bits of fluff that it picked up, and a rather small spider came out to see why I was wrecking his home. He didn't last long, of course. Um, but uh, you can find different things in locomotives. Again, the KDs. Someone pinched me a little brush. There we go. With these in the couplings, do the same as we did before because we do a lot of switching with these. And we make sure that the couplings are the right height. Now, if things are working right, I can show you that on one of the earlier cars. Well, because this happens for tr locos more so than with cars. We go on a piece of track, we hold it up and you can see just above the rail line, which is correct if you want to check, double check it, because you haven't got steady hands, which is quite often the case. We have a piece of track, KD comes up and it couples, it's the right height on the top and the trip pin goes over the plate at the bottom. If it doesn't clear that you have to adjust it. I'll show you that in a moment, there we go. The other end exactly the same. But if it was not right, take a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers with the serrations on the inside and on the top of the pin and the bottom of the pin and give it a very slight squeeze. These cost me $2.50. Um, if you want the ones that uh, go on there and do the correct curve and all the rest of it, they're probably about 20 times more expensive. And then double that again if you have to get them sent from America to wherever you live outside of America so yeah you have to do that on these these get hammered more than a piece of rolling stock because they're doing the work so we'll put him away one other local to do is ah, I have to go weightlifting for the picking these things up it's a brass loco. This one's about 35 years old. That I was given, I think, about 15 years ago. And I was maintenance then. I replaced the gearbox and the motor because it was open frame motor and the gearbox was very, very noisy. So that was a standard thing. But now if you buy a brass loco, um, it picks up off one side on the tender and the other side on the loco. I always saves a lot of hassle add pickups to the other side of the loco. And on this particular loco, because I had it all apart for changing motor gearbox, piece of circuit board, same thickness as the plate, cut it exactly the same as the plate. A little piece there will stop the gearbox moving around and added the pickups. All right. Now the same thing as before, you put the power on and you run the loco 10 mile an hour and do the same with the tender. As I say, these were done <laughs> four or five months ago, so they're not dirty as such. Um, common with some very, very old Brass locos is the front truck. It hadn't been serviced. No one had put any lubrication on the thing. And because it's brass and metal here, unlike the other one, what you do is 
put a drop of oil down each side of the wheel so it just touches the bearing inside and you need a longer one than that uh, where are we there it is so you'd go in and do that inside there and lubricate this one wasn't done which meant it's got elongated holes at the end and the wheels sit down and the bits of casting on the bottom of here were shorting on track so at some point I might drill it out and put new bearings in or do something like that but I haven't had time to do that unfortunately um, this one has had pickups added on the back so again make sure they're clean they're not shorting on anything if they've been used the logo's been used a lot the, the bearings the Phosphor bronze wire, in this case um, 10 thou phosphor bronze, does wear. Uh, normal use would probably take somewhere between 10 and 15 years to wear and need replacement. And that's a lot of running. So, and on this one, I can use the small brush with a drop of oil and get down in, oil the motor. I can reach the gearbox and I get into the back of the gearbox there so makes it easy now one more loco to finish the set <coughs> this is a plastic ready to run loco nothing wrong with them of course this one, um, 18 years old, and it's my yard switcher normally. If it's not, if I'm not switching with a diesel, so it's done a lot of running. And again, you clean the wheels in the same way as we've cleaned them before with the rolling stock. Just brush on, hold it one side, and let it spin. And we use CRC. To just in the inside edge of the axle because this has a brass bar which is spring loaded and sits on the axles so you're lubricating and you're getting rid of any oxidization and that's all that's required on there this one looks as though it's got dirty wheels on these two but no um, this has the drivers a, a, a floppy on here which is good a bit of up and down movement which means I can put a little bit of frog snot on each of those drivers and that almost doubles the uh, attractive effort of the of these particular locos so when you're switching it'll it'll pull a 20 car train in the yard without even thinking about it and again you require KD brushes now we'll just to prove you to you that it all works we'll put a bit of power on My phobia about extra pickups and doing things that way. I started off in HON two and a half, HON thirty, which means everything had to pick up where you could, and that's carried on over now when I've gone up into the big scale of HO. CRC doesn't go to waste because you get a, a cork block uh, they're normally three times this size chop them into three from the local hardware shop and 
spray a little bit of CRC on, cleans your wheels, cleans your track. This has been done numerous times, so there's nothing to worry about. But we'll get the local running. Okay, we've got the track set. Turn the throttle on. Uh, we call it the loco, which is 316. Check it. Nothing. Because the silly operator hasn't plugged the power in. There we go. There we are. Driver's happy. So, try the headlight. Yep, headlight works. Always good to put in the headlight on when you're testing a loco. Any bad pickups on any electrical problems, you'll see the headlight flicker. So, it's always handy. And on this one, we can turn the number boards on. And the green markers. Okay, we got them all on, just for show. So, we wind the knob up doesn't move just like your car before you can move away and put your foot on the throttle you've got to start the engine so we're starting the engine EMD as you know and we're in 24 uh, 28 speed steps on speed step one and there's a logo on the layout deciding to have a blowdown. But that's just moving across. Put something in front of it. And the engine revs up, notches up to get the load out the way. So you take your finger of the way and it'll drop down again. Now one quick change on this one and now switch it to 128 speed steps and step one nothing which is perfect step two of 128 she's just moving i can put that on the layout go away for and get lunch come back and it may have done a complete circuit without stopping at that speed that means all the pickups are clean, the wheels are clean, and it's doing what you want it to do. Run quietly. And we'll stop it, put the brakes on, and turn the engine off. And we'll try a steam loco. put the switcher on because it takes up less room I always like a little bit of weathering on the trucks they're much easier to see and put on rather than the jet black as they are out of the box so this one is 817 Yep, she's happy. So, turn the headlight on. Runs up. And the same as before. I can set it up like that and let it run round and round for testing. So, you know the thing is going to work. A lot of people complain that... Uh, it won't run at low speed or the locals are too fast or not fast enough that's just an adjustment in the decoder which is not part of this clinic all my locals do 30 mile an hour for the simple reason that uh, we'll unplug when I turn the speed up maximum is 32 
and 32 mile an hour and any speed in between that and zero is what the logo does according to the speed trap just makes it simple for operating but that's my quirk you don't have to worry about it there she goes put the brakes on right so maintenance when done regularly and done properly and if you follow a pattern been doing this for years now so it's second nature and you learn things as you go and you will learn from visiting other layouts and you'll think oh that's a great idea and you try it yourself and you like it it's what you want to do more than anything else because it's a hobby so go away I hope you've learned something today and We'll see you next time on whatever the clinic. Before I go, one other loco, if I remember which one it is. Right, we've got the loco. And... We'll zoom in a bit. There you go. This is another Proto 2000 loco. I've got three of these. And... The one I always want is the one that they had us to find. So, we call this one up. And a friend of mine who did a clinic in November on animation, he had a little play with this one. And as you can see, it, the bell rings. needs a slight adjustment but that's okay you leave him alone he wanted something to do you one afternoon on a visit and I said oh, I'll put a bell on that one and he did there's the bell so I had two people using this as a switcher and it was never more than about two foot in front of them and ringing the bell crossing the road in the yard no one neither of them saw the bell ringing so That's a little quirk of entertainment. I do have a little man with a light in the middle of a track waving his arm with a red light. Again, thanks to my mate Laurie McLean. I've been, he's only just up the road, just about 1,100 mile, uh, kilometers. So, didn't get a chance to pop down here that often. So, well, I hope you've enjoyed today and We'll see what the next clinic is. Just a quick demonstration of a pre-maintained car and one that's been looked after with a little bit of maintenance. 2% grade we start at the 2% grade at the same point, there, just a touch, and away it goes. And it got to there. It's all the way to the station. <coughs> to pass the test, they must get close to the switch tower by there. But this one's gone down, and sometimes they go right down the end of the yard to the silos at the end. So it's a difference. 
and when you've got a logo pulling them it makes a difference to how much you can pull I think we're live again. Now, usually we would bring a slide in that says technical difficulty, but in this case, we have to file a missing person report. Uh, Jerry is uh, uh, having some weather problems, so uh, we lost him somewhere. But if you look.